We can see in the sales register that we now have registered our first cash sale. If we're going to be dealing with people and having customers, we actually need at this stage then to learn how to set up a card within the card file. If I click close down the bottom here, it'll take us back to the sales command center. And on the right hand side at the top, we have the card file command center. If I click on there, it will take me into the cards list where I can also handle my contact log, my record of dealings with my customers, and also with my employees and my suppliers. And I can print out the mailing labels and maybe send out personalized letters to my various uh, customers. If I click on the cards list, it will come out with all cards, and there are four tags across the top, for one for customers, one for suppliers, one for employees, and one for personal. The personal is not necessarily people that I am involved in business with, but it's useful contacts I might want to keep on there, such as the name of that guy that knows everything about networking who I talk to occasionally, or hang on, who's that bloke I was talking to the other day that knows the name of all the good restaurants in a suburb not too far away? I can put him in there. It's a personal address list for people I want to keep in touch with. Because we're gonna be dealing first of all though with our customers, if I click on the customer tag, nothing much changes except that I'll just be talking to customers. And the first one in there is the cash sales customer. If I wish to create a new customer tag, if I click on the new button at the bottom, it'll come up with card information. And this has information such as a person's profile, room for some card details, his selling details, his payment details, contact log, and also jobs and history that will be associated with him. The card type is customer, and I have a different card type for each one of the groupings that we've talked about such as suppliers, employees, and also the personal. I have two designations. They can either be a company or they could be an individual. Most of my customers will be companies. So first of all, I can put in there the name of the customer. My customer. If I press tab, it will tell me the card ID. If necessary, I can put in a number or a serial number or whatever for the card ID. Most of the time, I would just use their names. The only people I know that use card IDs tend to be the video store or the DVD store these days, where I go in and hire a DVD for the weekend because I want to see it. They use numbers and they give you a little membership card, etc. For my business, I just use names and I stick to that. I also have locations. I have an address where I can send the bill to, but if I tick down there, I can also put in a second address, which may be different where the goods actually get sent to. So the first bill to might be a post office box where I send the invoice, but the ship to might actually be a store or an entry at the rear of wherever they might be. And they might have other addresses in there, such as address three, four, and five. I can fill those in. We'll stick at the moment with just the one, the bill two. I can then fill in the address, the city, the state, the postcode, the country, and the phone number, the fax number, the email, the website, the salutation. Do I call him Fred? Do I call him Mr. Smith? Do I call him Mr. Fred Smith? Once you've filled in all the details, we can then move on to the selling details. The sale layout, what sort of invoice do I wish to use for these customers? At the moment, I'm only using service sales, so I'll just stick to the service. I may have various printed forms for my customers, which I may wish to use. And I can therefore use a particular printed form for a specific group of customers if I so desire. We'll look at customizing invoices in a later video. 
My invoice delivery, how do I want to send it to them? Am I going to print them? Am I going to email them? Do I want to do both? Or is it already sent? In other words, if I'm running a shop front, they come in, they get their goods, I print it as it is. At the end of entering the sales details, I don't need to do anything further. That would be the one I tick. I would prefer to email my invoices and I will tell them what it is. The income account. If I always do a certain type of work for a certain customer, I can have it as a default. And if I click on the down arrow, it'll come up with what do I normally do? Remembering that I'm an electrical contractor, is it always service and repair work for these people? Or am I involved in a construction site? Or is it a renovation job for a customer? Or do they only buy out of my shop? In this case, we'll just stick with service and repair. Double click and it's in there as a default. Receipt memo, if I want to do it, if a certain salesperson always looks after them, or a certain sales comment on their invoice, or always a certain shipping method, I can set those up as defaults. The customer billing rate at the bottom, that's involved with time billing. We'll skip past that at the moment. Do I need to know my customer's ABN? Probably not, but there is one circumstance when I'll need to know it, and that is if I have to create a recipient created tax invoice. I'm not gonna go into the details of that at the moment, but uh, be aware that it is there. The tax code, normally it's gonna be GST. However, if I've got export sales, I might be selling these overseas and therefore there is no GST available. All I would need to do then is to click on the down arrow, select the appropriate tax code for an export sale and they'll never have GST again. They are gonna have GST, so we'll use that tax code and leave it. If I want to, I can always tick use the customer's tax code and that will override any defaults set for any other thing on the way through. I can also set up my customer terms what sort of terms are they? Is it always in a given number of days? And in this particular case, the balance due days is 30. If they qualify for a discount, I can change that from seven days, if they pay within seven days, to say 14 days, if I'm feeling generous. How much discount do I want to give them? For those of you that are against discounts, just make it a zero. And we'll click zero for the discount days as well. So at the moment, the terms will be in a given number of days and that number of days is going to be 30 days. You may wonder why the payment details are up there. Well, it allows me to record their credit card details. If you're using a laptop, I'd just like to point out there may be some dangers in having your customer's credit card details stored on your laptop if you lose your laptop. I'm not in favour of doing it. If it's a large computer system which is stuck in the office, then maybe you might like to consider it. The choice is yours, but please be aware of the risks of storing other people's credit card details on your software. That's all the information I will put in at the moment. We'll have a look at some more details on card files as we wander through the rest of the series. Click OK. I've now got my customer set up there and I'll close this and go back to entering a new sale. Thank you.